I'd like to talk to you about absurdities. And I would like you to question everything. God said that when people came and professed themselves to be wise, He gave them up to their foolish hearts, and their foolish hearts became darkened. And the word from the Lord today is from Jeremiah 9, 12. And he says, Who is the wise man or woman who will understand the Lord? Who is the one through whom the mouth of the Lord has spoken? Who follows after his ways? Will everything just be a wilderness and a wasteland? He says that because they have forsaken his law, that he set before them and have not obeyed his voice, that he's given them up to the imaginations of their heart, to their own foolish hearts. And in Romans 1, it talks about the foolish heart that becomes dark. And the foolish heart that becomes dark is a heart that is no longer seeking after God. So it's absurd to ask God to bless our sin, our foolish heart, our dark heart, God cannot bless. Because he's the light of the world. So when his light comes in, all darkness has to flee. So what's absurd to me is the equation we have in our nation that leaves God out, that says, Bless my sin. Bless my sin. I have a mathematical background, and it's you do an equation, and it equals something. But that is not an equation. That does not equal. God cannot bless your sin. So when a nation's foolish heart becomes dark, they walk after their own ways. He gives them up to have men having lust after men and working those things which are unseemly, women giving up natural affection, going towards one another. He gives them up to wickedness, greed, gossip, malice, all kinds of evil things, backbiters, haters of God, lovers of evil, disobedient people to God and to parents. And Rather than trying to justify our sin, we need to just see how absurd it could really get. Because we could just keep going with it. I mean, we could have, I want to have sex with an animal. Could you call that right? Um, we're using abortions as birth control. So how long can we go with that? It's like these things, are not pleasing to God. And they're not just not pleasing. They're hurting you. They're killing you. Your sin is causing you to die. It's death. Sin is death. And rather than advocating for our sin and asking God to bless our sin, why don't we just try to find out who He is and ask Him to forgive our sin? and cleanse us of our sin. And it doesn't matter how many people vote on it. It doesn't matter how many people think it's right. It doesn't matter if your government says it's right. It's not right if it's not right before God. And the lie is that our foolish hearts become dark, and we get so dark that we believe the lie. It says we begin to believe the lie in Romans and we give up the uncorruptible God and we worship the creature more than the creator. We worship each other, we worship idols, we worship what we think, and we want to make what we think into something that God should bless. And if there is a God, which I believe there is, we have to find out who He is, and what does He want, and what does He bless, and what does He want to bless. And I'm talking to all people here. I'm talking to my people. 
called by my name, that if they'll turn from their wicked ways, God will heal their land. I mean, Christians walk in greed, pride. I can't even believe how many believers believe in the whole homosexual lie as well. It's so sad. So I'm just wanting you to put it forth to God and put it forth in your own mind that perhaps it's absurd. Perhaps we could take it so far that I want to have sex with a zebra. So could you make everybody vote on that? I want to get married to the zebra and I want to have children with the zebra and I want everyone to call it right. In the meantime, my foolish heart would have been dark. I become sicker and sicker and sicker in my own sin. And there isn't any way out except for to call on God and ask Him, Who are you? And what can you do to cleanse my heart and bring in the light? Because He says He's the light of the world. And then if we walk in Him, we will not walk in darkness. We will have the light. And in that light is light. And He is the light. And He has overcome all these absurdities if we will call them absurd. And if you're completely at peace, and you're happy with everything in your life, then maybe you're not thinking that's absurd. But I feel that when I go after my own sin, I get more and more dark, and I get more and more unpeaceful. I begin to get sick because I'm separated from God. We become a sick nation. When a nation turns from God, there's all sorts of insanity. We have even our children on drugs. When a nation turns from God, he says, he gives them up. So that women are with women, men are with men, and of course, we're having sex as much as we want, and we don't even think about the consequences of what it's costing our children. And what I'd like to do as a prophet of God is just stand against that flood and say, this is absurd. It's so absurd. It's absurd. It's not natural. And... I want to be close to God because He's the light of the world and He brings the light into my life. He sucked darkness off of my body and He sucked it out of my heart. He, he cleansed my heart. He made me joyful and full of hope. And if my people called by my name would turn from their wicked ways, God would heal their land. And if they would humble themselves, it says in 1 Chronicles 29. I really believe that this is vital. It's vital. And I do that. And I'm asking believers to do that. Turn from your greed. Turn from your slavery to money. Turn from your pride. Turn from your own foolish heart that's become dark when you profess to yourself to be wise. Let's cry out to God that he would heal our land and you hear us, he, otherwise we're gonna have a whole new generation of children that don't, that call evil good and good evil. And I'm just wanting to call in the light, call in the light, ask the light of the world to expose the works of darkness in your heart and to be cleansed in your heart. Call on the light of the world to break lies and bondages from you in Jesus' name. And I command that darkness to be driven back from my land in the name of Jesus. I command you to be driven back from my land and that you would let my people go. I pray that you would break the lies that keep them in bondage and help people to see what they're believing and what they're being led to believe. 
I don't care how much media, I don't care how much propaganda, I don't care how many people stand and say something is right. If God says it's wrong, it's wrong. It's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong. And we are all gone astray under him. We are all undone under him. And the Lord says if we will return to him and we will understand his wisdom that he, he says don't let, and when we go on Jeremiah, he says don't let the man glory in his wisdom. Don't let a man or woman glory in their riches. Let them glory in the understanding and knowing of the Lord. Know the Lord, because this life is short and it's fleeting. And the, we're fragile. We're like grass that grows up in a day and is gone. And we want our souls to be with the light forever so we could be in the light. Wouldn't you rather advocate for the light than advocate your whole life to justify your sin and have everyone believe that it's right? It's not right. Using abortions as birth control is not right. We should be advocating abstinence. All of our sin hurts us, and all of my sin hurts me, and I continually want to be cleansed from my sin and go before the Lord to be cleansed. So I just want to say that if the equation, if the sum that we're looking for is peace, is joy, is love, is happiness, that we have got to take our sin and ask Jesus to cleanse us from our sin and forgive us from our sin so that we will have peace, love, joy, happiness, eternal life forever. That we can't have the equation of sin, God bless my sin, adds up to absurdity. And it will get darker and darker and darker in your hole of sin until you cry out to the Lord to be saved, unless you're reprobate. I do believe God turns people over and there is no more hope for them. Don't be one of those people. Question it. Question it. Let your perversions come off of you. Let be freed. Be freed of it. I've seen people freed of it. I've counseled people that have been freed of homosexuality and lesbianism. I've seen them freed and have families and lives. I've seen grown women and men who had abortions, because it's both. It's not just the women that are choosing. It's men and women choosing to make it right, to advocate abortions, and I've seen grown men and women after having multiple abortions weep and mourn for those children. I don't usually talk about this stuff, but I really felt it was on my heart. And then the whole greed in the Christian church, the whole not turning from your wicked ways, is, is causing our land not to be healed as well. So I just want to advocate for that. Like, let's let the light of the world come in so we have light, that he's the light of life, and him was the light of all men. <laughs> Professing to be wise, we became fools. And I would rather be the foolish thing that confounds the wise. Not the other kind of fool. I want to be the fool for the Lord. 
And I pray that you'd be filled with the Lord and want the Lord so much that you're willing to question and willing to lay down all things that may be served to God. In the name of Jesus, and I especially pray for young men and women today. I am sorry. You're growing up in an absurd time, in an absurd nation, and don't follow in it. Change it. Change the wave. Change the tide and stand up and be full of the Lord. Move in power. See babies rise from the dead instead of kill them in the womb. Pray of your people and have them be healed instead of bring sickness upon yourself. See demons fly off of mentally ill people and be healed and free. This is what I believe can happen. This is what I want to happen. And this is what I've seen happen. And I'm just telling you what I see. And I want that for you. And I've stood in the gap for 25 years. And I've suffered a tidal wave as it's gone against the Lord in our nation. And I'm not a right-wing fundamentalist. And I'm not a liberal. There's good and evil on both sides. You need to get with the Lord and be about the Lord's kingdom. Be a citizen of his nation. I'm a citizen of heaven. And I want to live on this earth as a citizen of heaven that is doing good works that will glorify my Father in heaven. Because while you're out there advocating for your sin to be justified, children are dying. Widows are having their land taken. Little children are being slaves in prostitute houses. You want to get on the side of the real justice and see the movement of God. That's what kind of justice I'd like to see. And I don't like linking up civil rights with gay and lesbian advocacy. A man or woman, or what color you are, is something that you're born with. The biological lie that is over you, if you are gay or lesbian, is saying to you that you were born with that, but it is not natural. You were not born with it. And I break that lie in Jesus' name. I break it off of you. It's a perverted spirit. You were probably molested when you had somebody hurt you when you were little. And I've seen it happen. I've heard of it. And I've seen people free. Freed of it. And I break it free you now in Jesus' name. And girls, young girls, just stop having sex. Just stop. Because the man will never stop. You have to stop. Some men will. And thank God for you. But young girls have to stop the tide because it's not okay. It hurts you. It hurts you. You have to have union with the soul. And it's not even just a marriage. E even in a marriage it can be wrong if you don't have a covenant in your heart with each other. It's the only time it's ever right is when you have a true heart covenant marriage with another person that's of the opposite sex, then God can totally bless you. Does he still pour out his mercy? All the time. All the time he pours out his mercy. Are we still just going to love more than anything? Yeah, L love. You know if you're going to sin like crazy, love and give and give of yourself. Extend mercy to others. Extend compassion. But I pray that you'll be cleansed from your sin and that we won't be absurd anymore. I'm embarrassed of our nation. I'm embarrassed. I'm ashamed. And the shame is covering my face, that it should be covering our faces. 
So, walk in the light. Because he's the light of the world. And I pray that light comes in right now and permeates your soul. Permeates your soul. Permeates your life. And I pray you freed right now of all mental illness and all bondages and lies that hold you to the earth and to ugly spirits. I command them off of you now in Jesus' name. I say to you, Satan, let my people go. You let my people go in Jesus' name. By the blood and power of his name. I praise you, God, that you will set them free. I pray they'll be freed emotionally. I pray that they'll be freed physically. I pray that they'll be freed spiritually and mentally now. In Jesus' name, by the blood of Jesus, be built up in your inner man and women. Be powerful, 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 powerful people of God. I pray for that. I advocate for the light of the world 